So a couple of weeks ago, I challenged myself to make the most effective variety of a canonical Space Marine Battle Company in competitive 10th edition Warhammer 40K. And this is what I came up with. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and this is another 40K List Tech video. Today, we're talking about playing a whole battle company. I set myself the challenge of getting as close as I reasonably could to a battle company, which is, if my lore recollection serves me, six tactical squads, two devastator squads, and two assault squads to make up 100 space marines. Now, it's difficult to fit all of that into a list without it being terrible, and uh, standard assault squads have been moved to 40k legends. We're stuck with assault's intercessor squads, but basically the bones of the list had to be those six tactical squads, and then we could flavor in the other firstborn infantry as I had points remaining. Now with that being the case, let's dive in and talk about the humble tactical squad. The Tactical Squad is a battle line infantry unit for the Space Marine faction. They don't really have much going for them, and I think they're much maligned as probably one of the least efficient units in the Space Marine Codex. At the time of recording, they cost 160 points for a unit of 10. That unit of 10 comes equipped with bolt guns. You can switch out some of the special melee weapons for the Sergeant. You get one special weapon equipped Marine, taking a Plasma Gun, Flamer, or melt -a gun and you also get a heavy weapon equipped marine who is probably taking a multi melt -a. Spoiler alert, we're taking a lot of multi melt in this list. Now with that, they come packaged with the Combat Squad's special ability, which allows them to Combat Squad out, that's actually where the name of that colloquialism comes from, into two units of five during your battle formation step. Now, most of the time in any other faction, this requires the use of a special transport, typically five model APCs like Immolators or Sagittors will allow units embarking in them to split into two units of five in order to allow those units to actually get into the transport. And one of the additional benefits of having those transports is that you get to split your units up. Essentially, the, you, you're buying the transport, but you're also getting the combat squad's ability from the tactical squad data sheet as a little bit of an added bonus. In this case, tactical squads do not need to do that. They just come in with that ability from the get-go, and to be honest, it's a pretty powerful ability. While they are relatively expensive per model at 16 points a model, taking the unit of 10 does get you one specialist squad with the heavy weapon, special weapon, and sergeant, but also an additional unit of five OC2 space marines. And while these guys are a unit that you would probably buy on your own, they're definitely not useless. And having an additional unit of pretty high OC infantry just running around the table, jumping onto objectives, holding your backline objectives, or coming out of strategic reserve is really useful. The other benefit that tactical squads have is the lack of the tacticus keyword. This is basically the new implementation of the Primaris keyword. Tacticus armor is the space marine armor that Primaris space marines wear. Tactical squads are firstborn space marines. They lack that keyword and that gives them some special benefits. It's weird that in the day and age of 10th edition, being upgraded to a Primaris space marine actually just makes you worse. It used to be that your stats got better, but now you're, you're just uh, not as good. What missing this keyword does is allow the tactical squad to embark into the firstborn marine transports, those being the Rhino and the Razorback. And these are actually kind of the stars of the show when it comes to this style of list. I've gone on record in the past as saying that the Rhino is probably one of the most under-costed units in 40k in 10th edition. Gives you a relatively resilient transport, it heals itself, it has a couple weapons on it, and a firing deck, so it's useful for those multi melta equipped marines, but also a 10 transport capacity on a fast body for basically no points. Transport mechanics in 10th edition are incredibly powerful, so getting access to a good cheap transport is solid, and those Tacticus armored units not being able to embark into them is really sad. The Razor I think is also a, another probably much overlooked unit in the Space Marine Codex. These guys only have a six man transport capacity instead of the 12 of the Rhino, but they come with a top mounted heavy weapon, which gives you some long range anti tank with a twin link glass cannon, and they give you fire support, which allows disembarking units to get re rolls against a target that the Razorback also shot at. So, moving into constructing the list alongside these 60 tactical Marines, the backbone of the list are going to be these incredibly effective 
effective transports that having firstborn space marines allows us to have access to. Now, I actually tested several versions of this list, including an Ultramarines-led version, trying to use the Ironstorm Spearhead mechanics to make Rhinos with multi multis firing out of their firing deck more effective, and that one was okay, if a little janky. But the best one that I came up with was a Salamander's Firestorm detachment. The Firestorm Assault Force gives the army access to assault weapons on every model. All your ranged weapons become assault, allowing everyone in the army to advance and shoot, or more importantly, advance and perform actions. That makes these six five-man bolter squads out of the tactical squads pretty useful as utility units, as they are able to disembark a transport if they are uh, embarked inside one, then advance onto a position to cleanse or deploy teleport homers, which makes the army pretty good at scoring tactical objectives, which I guess makes sense because they're, they're called tactical squads after all. So the list I came up with was led by Adrax Agatoni plus Vulcan Heston. Adrax is there mostly as a melee beat stick. The tactical squads are pretty bad in melee by themselves, but Adrax gives them full wound rerolls if he's leading the unit. There's also an interesting clause in the embarkation rules for rhinos and razorbacks. Because most of the firstborn characters in the codex were removed in the 10th edition codex, these transports actually got a little bit of an exception for Tacticus armored characters that are attached to a non-Tacticus armored unit. This means that if you have a unit like a Tactical Squad and you have attached a Tacticus character to it, like Adrax, who is a primary Space Marine, he can still embark into a Rhino or a Razorback. This is super cool because it gives access to a lot of the normally unplayable Primera Space Marines in this firstborn oriented build. We then also have Vulcan Heston who can point at an enemy and give us full wound rerolls with our Melta and Torrent weapons. He's mostly there to buff the insane number of Meltas that we have in this list. Everything's Meltas all the time. And speaking of multiple Meltas, we are taking those six tactical squads, all of them equipped with the three Meltas that they can mount a multi melta on the Heavy Weapon Marine, a melta gun on the Special Weapon Marine, and an Inferno Pistol on the Sergeant. Those guys are being ferried around by seven transports, three Rhinos as well as four Razorbacks. And two of the Razorbacks are actually gonna be taken up by two Devastator squads. Couldn't fill out the entire list using just Tactical Marines. And so we started to dip into the Devastator contingent of the Battle Company, taking two units of five models equipped with four multi meltas. These guys are a little bit the star of the show. They can embark into Razorbacks and then make use of fire support from the Razorbacks to get full wound rerolls. They're also, as soon as they're within 12 inches of an opponent, plus one strength, thanks to the Firestorm Assault Force Detachment ability, so they go to strength 10, and if you're within six inches of your opponent, then you can use Crucible Battle for plus one to wound as well. If you are attacking your Oath of Moment target, either through Vulcan Heston or through the Razorback, you're sourcing wound rerolls, and these guys are gonna be firing eight Melta shots, potentially wounding on fours or fives, uh, maybe even threes, depending on the toughness of your enemy, with full rerolls hit and wound at AP four for D6 plus two damage if you're in Melta range. This is basically death for at any, anybody with a bunch of wounds. They'll just kill them. While these Devastator squads are relatively expensive at 120 points for only five models, alongside the Razorback being a 95 point transport, again, a little pricey, these guys aren't the most efficient use of your points, but a big takeaway from this video is that I think these, this combo is actually not too bad. <laughs> if you want to play Devastator squads, mounting them in a Razorback and getting wound rerolls from fire support is really good. And these guys will kill a lot of stuff. Another combo that we have alongside the Firestorm Assault Force is the ability to re-embark into transports at the end of the fight phase, assuming it wasn't a turn that they had already disembarked. This means a turn that you overload your opponent by disembarking multiple tactical squads and Devastator squads, getting rerolls from their, your fire supporting Razorbacks and just decimating whatever's in front of you. If your opponent isn't able to kill all of that on the clap back, you can then spend a CP to put it back in the razor back to allow you to disembark and shoot with it again in the future. You can also use your Rhinos as a little bit of a fire support platform. They can embark two of the five man heavy weapon squads from the tactical squad. So you can combat squad out a unit with the multi meltas and put two of those multi melta units into a single Rhino, firing both multi meltas out of the top of the Rhino whenever you need to. You can also, if you have empty spaces in your Rhinos, embark just some of the standard bolter squads and use that as a little bit of an extension to their movement so they can go perform secondaries. You can 
also put several combat squads into reserve in order to score secondaries out of strategic reserve. A little bit less useful, not as good as an Uppy Downy or a Deep Striker, but still definitely helps you get random points and screen out random table corners if you really need to. And that's really the strength of this style of list. While the tactical squads themselves don't do too much damage and are not particularly efficient, you are getting 12 scoring units out of them. And once you also take into account the seven transports that they're coming in out of, you have 19 individual units that your opponent has to clear off objectives, and all of which can score secondaries and be on different areas of the table in order to score positional secondaries. On top of that, we didn't have two Devastator squads, which are also just gonna do pretty solid damage. And the list itself is just passively doing damage to you with the massive number of multi beltas that are constantly poking at you. That makes the list fairly good at scoring and extremely good at dealing lots of damage at close range, which I think honestly, makes it not too bad. I'm not gonna tell you that I think this is a particularly competitive variety of Space Marines, but I do think that if you do have the firstborn bug and you wanna play non-primary Space Marines, taking tactical squads and especially Devastator squads inside these Razorbacks isn't the worst thing that you could do. The tactical squads are really good as a scoring element and the Devastator squads can actually do some significant damage once jumping out of those transports. The list as a whole, I think, is maybe decidedly mid-tier. You could you could maybe win an RTT with it or something, but I don't know if you're gonna go all the way in a GT. Uh, but I think it is cool that an experiment like this, uh, it was relatively successful. It is possible to play a thematically focused battle company list in 10th edition and have it come out fairly well. If you wanted to switch the chapter out as well, I don't think that Salamanders is necessarily required. I mostly switched into Salamanders for their synergies with Meltas, since Vulcan and gives you rerolls on those Meltas, but given that most of your Meltas are disembarking from Razorbacks, you're gonna be getting wound rerolls from them anyway. And you can take other different melee units uh, that aren't just Adrax in order to add a melee counterpunch to the army. There are lots of other melee Space Marine characters, not just Adrax. He's a particularly good one, but you could also take characters like Marius Calgar if you wanted to switch into an alternative chapter. I do think that the Firestorm Assault Force for this style of build specifically does have the most synergy and is the most effective, but that's not to say that there are no other ways to play first board space marines i've submitted these lists to a couple of online competitive events that i'm playing over on my twitch channel so please go follow me over there at twitch.tv slash tactical tortoise tv if you want to see my games play out and exactly how the list operates and the recordings of those games are also going up on my second channel tactical tortoise tv as they fall off of twitch but in the meantime let me know down in the comment section what you think about this style of list and whether a firstborn focused space marine list is something that you would try in your own playtime at home big thanks for watching although way to the end of the video. Thanks as well to everybody who supports the channel, either over on Patreon, patreon.com slash tactical tortoise, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subscribers. All you people are amazing, and I love you. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.